if you only treat your pet for a month, these new guys are hatching and coming out and jumping on there too. So when we treat, we must treat the house, treat everything. Um, so that stage can go on for quite a long time. So flea allergy, dermatitis, it's one of our big ones too. Um, so as if fleas don't cause enough of an issue all on their own, we do have a couple of these fluffy pets that are also allergic to fleas. Um, we all know that person that goes to the party who gets chewed apart by mosquitoes where everybody else seems like they're fine. This is perfect kind of uh, comparison. That person just happens to be fluffy and be allergic to the mosquitoes, which is why they have the issue. Same idea with our pets. So these guys, um, you might not really see fleas on them. They might be on a preventative, so they, you know, we see nothing. When we come through them here, we might not see anything because it all takes about one, two flea bites, that's it, and they become atrociously itchy while they have this allergic reaction. Um, so a lot of times to treat these guys, we still want to keep them on that flea preventative. We have to take a few extra steps. Um, usually we're looking for steroids or lethohistines, sometimes a combination of the both of those to calm down all that inflammation, the irritation, and the itchiness. Um, and then since this is so unbearably itchy, a lot of times they scratch and chew at each other until they have these scabs, kind of like in the picture here. Um, so these little wounds also become infected, and that bacteria that grows in there causes its own kind of bout of itchiness. So you get this terrible repeating cycle where the fleas cause the itchiness, and then the bacteria cause the itchiness. You get rid of one, but then the other one's still there, and it just goes on and on. So you've got to kind of hit the fleas, and then the itchiness, and then also the infection all at the same time to really get rid of this. Um, sometimes we will use a shampoo in conjunction with this. Um, so we have shampoos out there now that have the, the um, antibiotic portions that will help get rid of the infection, and then we also can help with itchiness, kind of just depending on what we see. The doctor face where we make a decision on whether or not we need that shampoo in there. Um, so obviously, to prevent this and also treat it, you know, get rid of the fleas in the home, so treating the house, treating the pet, uh, a big one is making sure your other pets are all prevented, uh, on a preventative rather, as well. Um, all too often we have a dog come in, I keep having fleas and I don't know why, and then, you know, Fluffy the kitty that never goes outside is kind of carrying these little waters around and not being uh, protected by any kind of flea prevention just to go outside. So sometimes that can kind of keep things going here. Well, how do you protect your house? So the house, um, that's more, if you keep your pet on uh, a preventative, you're going to eventually kind of break through that cycle. So usually if you come in and you have oh, a pet that has stop. fleas, we'll get you a perfect example. Um, <laughs> the knockout spray here, they make bombs as well. Um, but the sprays, I like because you can kind of control exactly where they go. Uh, so if you have pets that you can't take away from the house for a couple hours while the bomb goes off, you can do this area spray. So you can do that like room by room and that's a different area. Um, these do a rather large area, but they kill the eggs and the adults. Um, nothing really gets that pupa stage, which is why I usually recommend treating your house every two weeks. So while you have an active infestation, treat your house and treat your pets, and then usually about three months after you break that cycle, you can usually kind of lay off treating the house, because if your pets aren't bringing anything new in, then you're not going to keep getting you know, okay, new fleas in the house. Uh, we can always get a price for you if you like there. You can check at the end. I think it runs right around $32, if I recall. Um, the bombs, I, they're nice, but you have to leave the house for a couple of hours, oh, and yeah. then I still recommend treating like every two weeks until you kind of get control of things. You get stuff like at Walmart, yeah? Or you can. Home? Not this particular product. You can get kind of different uh, brand names and things. Um, I haven't used a whole lot of this, so I couldn't really speak on how effective they are. Um, I have this here, so I can use it. <laughs> Um, Kara, that runs. Kara, mm -hmm. that runs twenty eight seventy eight. Okay, twenty eight seventy eight. Oh, yeah. So I was a few bucks high. <laughs> you also have to dump your sweeper. That is a good point. Spray yeah. something yeah. into the hose and that. To yeah, actually, using the uh, the spray there right inside your vacuum can be pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah. And when you vacuum it, actually, that pupa stage that lies on it, it will kind of the vibration will wake those up and catch them early. And so you can kind of break that cycle too. So that's a good point there. Um, if you do sweep, you want to make sure you run your vacuum, dump it in a bag or something like that, and then you really take it outside. Otherwise, they will crawl right back out of there and come back into the house, which is no fun. <laughs> so, um, atopic dermatitis. Um, this is a big one we see. Um, environmental allergies. So. 
percent. I'd probably agree with that. We see quite a bit here. So a lot of times you will see this pretty seasonally. Um, if it is through like a pollen or something outside, a grass and something like that from the trees, um, and because we're only seeing those certain times of the year. Um, so you know, goldenrods. I mean, we have a lot around here. You can see pets that are allergic to that, so they might only be having symptoms when that um, is in bloom there. Um, we do see pets that have allergies to dust mites and things like that, so they will actually have problems year round. Those dust mites, um, certain molds, uh, they can actually live right in your house, and you can't really get rid of those too effectively, so it's really hard to just keep them away from it. Can they be allergic to their own fur? Not to themselves, but I have had dogs come in that are actually allergic to cats, so that's kind of crazy, but it can happen. Oh, because um, as long as I keep my one trimmed short, mm -hmm. the groomer, She's great. The minute that starts to grow, she starts scratching. Could be a couple of different things involved there. Um, it's possibly if there is something in the house, like a dust mite, for instance, it might be sitting here a little better when that hair is longer. Um, the other thing, too, when they have long hair and they start chewing, they trap all that moisture in there, and that can kind of start some issues when they yeah, are yes, looking and chewing. I've kept her so, short <coughs> so long. I was going to say, if that no, helps, she probably good. doesn't know if she should have long hair. Yeah, that's, it does help if they don't have you know, more hair to chew at. It's a little easier to control allergy issues. So yeah, that's probably very helpful. Um, this is something that unfortunately we can see start rather young. Um, so I do see younger dogs come in two or three years old. is usually where I start seeing it. Um, and unfortunately, for people kind of get better as they get older, these guys are the opposite. They tend to get a little worse as they get older. Uh, so, you know, a pet that might at first only have issues only in the spring, of the down the line, we might be having issues all the way So, it can be pretty tough. Um, the, you know, areas we tend to see this um, are areas that come in contact with the allergies a lot of times. So, in the city, so around the rectum, um, their feet, their belly, those kind of things. Um, ear infections can be pretty common. Um, and then their face sinks down in the grass and things. You see a lot of hair loss um, and irritation there. Um, and these are allergens that are absorbed on the skin, so sometimes you know, um, to reduce the exposure when they're pumping from outdoors, we can recommend uh, a bath, uh, like in their feet, uh, shredded pads, things like that, to kind of get that allergen off can be pretty helpful. Um, there's a lot of shampoos and things out there that also help calm down that irritation that sometimes we can use. Um, Antihistamines, so sometimes you need to go something really strong, but certain pets, Benadryl is enough to kind of knock this down. Um, it depends on how severe they get. Like I mentioned, some of these guys can get really bad and they get worse as they get older. So sometimes we do have to go to steroids. Um, Apical is a new drug that's out there. It's not quite a steroid, but it uh, does some pretty awesome things there, and that can be something they have to be on for a lifetime, honestly, to have some energy issues. Um, and anything basically besides some scratching can cause secondary bacterial infections. So sometimes we do have to go on antibiotics to get rid of anything there. Um, they do have a lot out there as far as you know, the antibiotics go to get rid of this. Um, uh, so food allergies are kind of the opposite out here uh, as far as that goes. So it's not quite as common, but it can be a lot worse. The cake out here. That's pretty severe. Um, we don't tend to see it quite that terrible, but it can get there. Um, so chronic ear infections, looking at the feet, those tend to be symptoms we see pretty frequently. Um, cats, a lot of times, will see kind of hair loss everywhere. Um, sometimes you can see vomiting and diarrhea with these, since it is the food that they're taking in. Um, they tend to be pretty itchy. Um, really, the only way to decide is this a food allergy is to put them on hypoallergenic foods. Um, and these trials can be kind of a burden on the owners. Um, they have to be very, very strict, so once they start on these foods, they can't have anything else. Um, a chicken flavored treat can be enough to really just set them right back to where they started. Uh, so chicken and beef do tend to be the two most common food allergies that we see uh, because they're the most common things in their food that they are exposed to. Uh, so a lot of times the hypoallergenic foods, they can be either like a lab-made protein or they can be um, something they're not eating normally. So a lot of times these, they're allergic to the protein in the food, so the hypoallergenic foods go to a new protein, like venison, duck, salmon, things like that. But to really know what the issue is, you have to keep them on it for at least six to 12 weeks. 
Um, and if they completely clear up, and then you switch them back to their old food, and they immediately start itching and having skin problems again, then you know it's the food allergy there. Um, so once they start, a lot of times they do get these infections, like this cat here obviously has just you know, a nasty thing going on there. Um, they can get the overall hair loss like the dog is showing. Uh, so a lot of times they do have to go on some steroids. Um, antihistamines can be helpful, um, definitely some shampoo, antibiotics, you to kind of start us over here. Uh, if they do have a vomit or diarrhea, sometimes they have to start them on support medication to help clear that up as well. And, um, of all the things out there, the environmental and food allergies can be very, very frustrating. Um, you know, we're all usually pretty good to you know, give them a little snack when we're eating, and that gets really difficult to not do if they're allergic to whatever you're having. So. Yeah, hot spots. I think we've all probably seen hot spots a time or two. Um, they kind of start up when we have really moist, humid weather outside. Um, right now is not a terrible time, but in the middle of you know July, August, we see lots of these. Um, so a lot of times they start with something that caused itchiness, something small. So a bug bite, they went outside, they got bit by a fly, they got bit by you know somebody bee. Um, sometimes fleas. Um, they can have an allergy that starts the itchiness. Um, a, a wound, you know, that can be something that starts this out. You know, they go outside and scrape against uh, a porch railing or something and get scratched by a nail. So it really doesn't take much at all to start these off. Um, and then what happens is they start licking and chewing. Their fur traps all the moisture in there, and it's just a perfect place for bacteria to take over and go crazy. Um, and honestly, I've seen a hot spot this size happen in hours. So it's pretty fast. Um, diagnosis is usually kind of just, you know, we see it, we know what it is. Um, I have some food start humidity, so usually we want to start them on a paper how to do it for three keys. A lot of times we want to put them in the shade area and clean it all up. Um, a lot of dogs that come with the six double layer coats with one of these, because they are just perfect for trapping all that moisture in there. Um, so we want to shave all that up, clean it up. recommend the bone shame for these guys too because they're just causing so much damage to themselves. Um, and then usually they have to go home on oral medications, uh, antibiotics, steroids, that kind of thing to help calm all this down. Um, the biggest thing is really just keep them from injuring themselves further. So um, depending on where they're at, the bone is perfect. Sometimes they have to trim down and trim out just make sure they're not scratching themselves anymore. Pyodomas, that's just basically a skin infection. So they can come from a lot of things. They can be in association to endocrine problems, so imbalances there, uh, thyroid tests, things like that, immune suppression. So a lot of times we see our little puppies with these come in with these. Uh, their body's just not up to the immune against infection yet. Um, this can be very itchy or not at all itchy. Um, so on the right, probably the right itchy irrigation there. But other times they come in, we just notice kind of little splotches on the skin and that don't really seem to bother the pet, but you know, it might smell a little funky, which aren't fun either. Um, sometimes they can treat just topically uh, with shampoo, uh, depending on how bad they are. Sometimes they do a little bit of antibiotic, a little bit of steroid to calm those down. Um, they can start from allergies as well. A lot of things happen. <laughs> so yeast dermatitis. Uh, we see these fairly frequently as well. They're a little bit more ugly. Um, so yeast are kind of a, um, they come secondly, uh, contributing factor to skin disease. So you get this thick elephant skin, is basically what we call it sometimes rhino skin, um, from just chronic irritation. Um, they lick, they chew over a long period of time. So these aren't things that they see once most of the time it tends to come back. Um, so you get a nice musky odor, is what most people will call and say, hey, my, my dog smells like uh, potato chips. I get that pretty frequently. Um, and it's usually a yeast infection. Uh, so they get the thick, um, dark black skin too, so they get that coloration there, and that's also from chronic um, licking and chewing and things there. You get some scaling with this, you can get kind of like pustules, they get a lot of flakes and kind of dandruff with it too. Um, under the belly, the armpits, those tend to be pretty common areas that we see that. Um, it can be pretty itchy, uh, and it can get really hot and red to the touch. Um, so this guy, you know, he's pretty red and irritated there. If you touch 
Ashford Stanhope.